Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving my review on the 2X battery system. So if you don't know what 2X is, it is a triple battery system that uh, does several upgrades to either your one wheel uh, version one or your one wheel plus. Number one, it's meant to increase the range to about 12 to 16 miles on a single charge. It's also going to give you a little bit extra boost in power or torque and also help uh, prevent nose diving. So in terms of the nose diving, what that means is that instead of uh, one battery on your Plus or V1 having to uh, take care of the demand on the motor, you have one, two, and three batteries where you can see my cursor that spread that demand um, a little bit more equally amongst three batteries rather than just uh, one. So I've been using this now for about a month. I have not decided to film a review because I was not able to get in a full ride from 100% down to zero, but I brought my board and 2X back to my family's place for Christmas. Weather cleared up nicely, and for the past three days, I've been riding it from 100% to a low battery pushback and feel that now is as good as time as any to let you know what my thoughts are. So let's talk about what those advertisements are on the uh, 2X website. So as I just mentioned, this is off of 2X. You can see here 12 to 16 mile range. Does it give me that? Yes, it does. So on day one of my ride back here with my family, I got, I think, 14 miles on my first ride, 13 and a half on my second ride. And then on my last ride, it was very cold and I had a fair amount of uphills. I got about... I think 10 and a half or 11 miles. So as far as I'm concerned, it does give, um, it does deliver on that, uh, on that performance of 12 to 16 mile range. Let's talk about a boost in power. Is it anything that you will feel noticeably? I would say it depends on the terrain. So riding on flat, I've ridden my plus stock and I've ridden it now on the 2X. I don't really notice a huge boost in torque or acceleration or power on flat on uh, uphills is really where I noticed that there's a difference. So on my plus stock battery, I definitely noticed that the board struggled to get uphill. It was going pretty slow and it would have these things called pulsations where as you're going up the hill, the board would judder just a little bit, but it wouldn't shut off. And so you could really feel that the board was struggling to carry you up. I'm about six two and I weigh about 180 pounds. So yours might be worse or better than mine. But having installed the 2X now, I had this, I think, 30 degree grade uphill going back to my parents' house and where I usually would struggle on my plus with the 2X went up perfectly smooth, had no pulsations and was maintaining a nice even speed at about, you know, 12 or 14 miles per hour all the way up to the top of the hill. So I think it does deliver on a boost in power. How about a risk, a reduced risk of nose diving? So... I can't say whether or not I've, I've, I've had that. I, I would have to just say that based on the design of the battery system that yes, it does do that. I have not had any nose dives um, since I've installed the 2X, but I've also become a better rider since installing this. So it could be a little bit of both. Um, no real way to prove that it does, but just thinking of the fact that now I have three batteries balancing my workload rather than one, I would have to say that yes, it does reduce uh, the risk of nose diving. Um, now in terms of rideability, I'll get to this other information on this website later. Um, how does it feel to have you know something different underneath your feet while you're riding? So before I installed the 2X, you know, obviously I could carve, I could turn, I could go uphill and downhill perfectly fine. I could go off of curbs. I could go onto curbs and be completely okay. With the 2X, I can do almost all of those things as well. So carving, if anything, I think is actually a little bit easier and my balance actually feels a little bit better with the 2X. I think the reason for that is kind of what you would think about with Tesla cars and their balance ratings or stability ratings. So if you know anything about Tesla, electric car company, they mount these really heavy battery packs underneath the floor. So the car has a really low center of gravity, which helps give it better stability in turns. And I think with the 2X, adding that extra weight underneath the rail has done the same. I just feel that much more planted as I'm going into a turn and as I'm carving. Um, 
in terms of going off curbs or curb dropping, I've had no problem. Soren actually uh, has a separate section on his website that you can look up that shows the math that he calculated to figure out how fast you need to at least be going to clear the battery packs from hitting a curb. So you can do it, but you just have to make sure that you're going over that um, mile, mile per hour threshold that he uh, calculated. Um, curb nudging or mounting up a curb or you know grinding or sliding on curbs, you're not, I guess you could do it, but it's not recommended for obvious reasons. You could be hitting those battery packs. They are by no means fragile. They're super durable, but you don't want to be, you know, unnecessarily exposing them to any risk. So I think that is probably your only major sacrifice with getting this kit is, you know, maybe some stunts and curb mounting. Um, how about uh, some people have asked me, how does it feel carrying the board physically by the handles now that you've had a little bit, now that there's a little bit more weight with the battery packs? I will say that uh, carrying the board by the front handle, so you can see the battery pack here, and here's my front handle. It's a little bit harder um, for me to carry it to my side just because of the added weight. It definitely is not impossible, but you know, you're going to need to have a little bit more muscle to kind of, you know, carry this around. Um, and feel comfortable. I also do have a a um, silver handle by Mazco mounted here that you can see, and this is only attached by Velcro straps. And I've carried this 2x with my board with absolutely no problem. So I would say perfectly fine carrying the board with the uh, with the 2x installed. Uh, another question I've been getting is how about accessories? So you can see I'm running some V3 plates with my 2x. Um, can I do it with my board as well? Um, Sorn does not recommend doing that, obviously, because what will happen is you'll you'll decrease the clearance between uh, the board and the ground. So let me show you here. Here is the 2X without a V3 plate underneath it. I have a cut V3 here to the side but the 2X is mounted as it's supposed to be. And you can see here that there's a fair amount of clearance. I would say it's about six or seven stacked up quarters worth of clearance with the board in this orientation. Now, if I go ahead and take a V3 plate and mount it, which I did here, you can see that it decreases the clearance to about how many quarters is that? Three quarters. I think I was also able to get a dime in there. So about three quarters and a dime. So you still can use V3 plates. You can still have clearance with both, but you know, depending on the terrain you're riding and the style of riding you do, you just have to be cognizant of the fact that your board is a little bit more, your battery pack is a little bit more exposed to, uh, to hitting the bottom. Um, another question is how hard is the installation? So I will say that the installation is not difficult. It's not impossible, but it is definitely long and you have to be precise. So I took some pictures of the installation here and you can just see like, you know, how much work goes into it. You're going to need to feel comfortable disassembling, you know, most of the board. Um, you're going to have to be comfortable with um, arranging wires, getting out machine screws, reattaching them, positioning things. So definitely things that you can do, but you just have to kind of follow Soren's instructions properly and, um, and to the letter. So he has on his website, let's go back to that, an installation page, which is great because he gives you all the materials you're going to need. And he has this fantastic video that has a separate camera guy filming him installing the 2X onto his board. So you get some patience you know, take your time at it, have this video, and I think you'll be perfectly fine. Um, what were the most difficult steps in installing this? I will say getting the uh, wires from the satellite packs um, into the battery box and getting the battery box closed is probably the most difficult. So let me show you what I mean here. Okay, so if you can follow my cursor, here on the left, you have the satellite packs coming in with these wires here, and then they enter the battery tray. And then inside the battery tray, we have to lay down all these wires in such a way that they not only lie flat and clean without being pinched, 
but they also need to be in such an orientation that they can wrap around, so just follow my cursor here, they can wrap around and eventually plug into the BMS circuit board. So for example, this wire here in particular was very hard to reach into the BMS with the first way I laid it down. I think I laid it down closer to the outer edge. So then I had to take apart the battery, the main battery sitting on top, reorient that wire, sit it down, test it back, and try to plug it into the BMS. Into the BMS. So it takes some trial and error. I was finally able to do it, but I think this is the trickiest step. And then once you get all these wires plugged in where they need to go, um, closing it up, which is basically taking this silver lid here and reattaching it over the battery box with your you know, aftermarket wires in there is tough because you have extra material now running into this, into this box and there isn't a lot of room to accommodate. So everything really has to be laid precisely as Soren does in the video. Either than that, once these two things are, you know, put back into place, it's very straightforward, very easy. Getting these satellite packs here that you can see in black back onto the board are no problem. I would say anybody, anybody can do that with just some basic tools and basic know-how. So you do not need to be, you know, a machine expert or an engineer to put this together. Just follow the video and you will be fine. Um, another thing that I experienced and have been asked about is, can I travel with this? So legally, uh, you cannot travel with the 2X. The 2X, as I mentioned earlier, is a, um, is a triple battery system. So you have that main battery from the 2X that goes and replaces the stock one in the plus or the V1. And then you have a second battery here and a third battery here. All three batteries need to be used uh, in order to have the system work. And because you have three batteries, it puts you over that 160 watt hour limit by the FAA, the TSA, and uh, all the airlines. So you cannot travel um, with the 2X. Can you use the battery pack separately? So as I just mentioned, no. You can't just maybe use the one 2X battery in the main compartment and take out the satellite packs or use half a satellite pack. You have to use all three because I think it just completes the series and it allows the uh, the system to work with the board. So not possible. Um, how does the 2X fare with, you know, inclement weather? So I've not ridden in snow, but I have done a fair amount of riding on, you know, pretty muddy trails. Definitely have ridden in the rain, have gone through some maybe two or three inch puddles. So I've gotten splashes on the satellite packs. So far, no problem. When I opened up my battery board uh, last week to do some, you know, just basic testing of my cells, I had already ridden in water the week before and the night before actually, and did not notice any water getting into the system. So I would say it's not waterproof, but it is pretty fairly uh, weather uh, water resistant. Um, is it possible to make it more water resistant? Yes, um, Soren again covers that in his uh, website. So if you go back here to, um, I think it's FAQs. Anyways, you'll have to explore his website because there is a separate section in here that talks about making the system more water resistant. Oh, there we go, weatherproofing. So Soren does um, kind of give you some basic tips on how to add um, a little bit of sealant to the areas where water could potentially uh, get into. So you can, you're covered on that. Um, how durable is the 2X system? So again, I haven't, grinded on it. I haven't hit it on anything, so I can't comment on, you know, the actual quantitative toughness of it. But, you know, according to Soren's website, it's made out of some pretty strong material. The um, satellite packs that are underneath, you know, as I'm installing them, I'm, I'm feeling the case and it feels very rugged, very durable. So I would say they, they are fairly, um, fairly resistant to a normal, normal wear and tear. Okay, so how about customer service? So you're spending, you know, a pretty good, um, you know, chunk of change here, uh, anywhere from I think about four twenty-five or is it four hundred fifty dollars? 
I think it's about 450 bucks to get the uh, 2X. So anyways, it's over 400 bucks. You're spending a good amount of money. How good is the customer service? I would say feel completely confident with it. Uh, Soren is absolutely excellent. Uh, last week, I had an incident where I was at a stoplight. I didn't notice anything physically with my board while riding, but I went to look down at my app and it showed that I had a dead cell and I texted Soren about it. And within a few minutes, um, Soren hopped on to Facebook Messenger. So like, Soren got on. I kind of just gave him a snapshot you can see here. I said, uh, hey Soren, like here's my um, dead cell. You know, is it something I need to worry about? Soren got back to me instantly saying, um, you know, this is what we can do to test it. Uh, do you have any other questions? Um, he stuck with it to me all the way through the end. We ended up finding out it was actually just a bug with the app. It actually wasn't a problem with the uh, 2X system, but the fact that he went out of his way, he even told me to call him while he was commuting on the train. I, you know, I, I told him I could do it later, but he said, no man, just feel free to call me anytime. Um, so he really is open to, you know, hearing you out and and making sure that you have a good experience with your uh with your 2x system so i highly recommend it and then his website too you know he doesn't just sell you the item he has a really lengthy you know well organized frequently asked questions section that you know just shows you he wants you to understand what exactly you're purchasing and wants you to feel comfortable with what you're using um Let's see, uh, another popular question I've been getting is how difficult is it to tell your range? So you know that with a typical one wheel, what happens is you go to one wheel and then you click on your board and then you look at that battery percentage meter. Now with the 2X, you will still have access to the one wheel app. You will still have a 100% battery reading when it's fully charged, but within about a few miles, like three to five, the one wheel app will show that your battery is dead, but you actually have plenty of juice left in the battery pack. So what that means is you need to use um, one of two different apps, third-party apps to measure your, um, uh, your battery voltage. So what you can do here is um, download either OneWave or you can download uh, PO Wheel, okay? So to download PO Wheel, you're going to go to the uh, Android store and uh, just type in PO Wheel, download it. You will um, turn the Bluetooth on on your phone, then you will turn your board on, and then you're going to launch the app. And then once you launch the app, you're going to click on scan. So for example, one wheel, one wave, scan. Now my board is too far, so it won't pick this up. Eventually your board will be picked up here. It'll pair, and then now you can take a look at all these different, um, look at all this different data about the board. Now to look at how much distance or how much juice you have left, you wanna focus on this right here, battery voltage. Now um, that can be a little bit intimidating at first to figure out how to translate uh, battery voltage to fuel percentage. So um, thanks to a lot of great members on the 2X group on Facebook, which I, I recommend you join. They have broken it down for me and I did take a uh, snapshot of it. So this is from Mr. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, Johanna Honkinen. Honkinen, I'm sorry. <laughs> really nice guy in the 2X group. He's been very helpful in, in helping me to understand this battery thing. But anyways, when your board is plugged into the wall and it's paired to either the OneWave or the PO Wheel app, at 100%, it'll show on your app 58.5. So again, when you go to that app, like OneWave, right here where it says battery voltage, 100% plugged in will be 58.5. Let's say you're about to ride, you go ahead and unplug your board. The battery is still technically at 100%, but your battery voltage will now show only 54 volts. So even without riding, you're going to lose 4.5 volts, which is completely normal. Then between 50 and 54 volts, that's kind of where you look at it like 0 to 100%. So 54 volts meaning closer to 100%. 50 volts, meaning closer to 0%. Once you're at 50, you can kind of assume that you're at less than 10% juice, right? So at 52, 
that's where you kind of want to turn around on your ride and head back to your car. So that's how you interpret, you know, your quote unquote fuel gauge. It's a little bit tricky at first, but I think if you just take a screenshot of this or something similar, keep it in your photos in your gallery on your phone, refer to it as you're riding, pretty soon you're not even going to need it. You'll just know I'm at 52% or 52 volts. I know that I'm at 50%. I'm good, right? So not very difficult to do. Um, one last thing regarding the apps. Um, you can also take a look at your, uh, your cell voltages here, both on the uh, one wave and the PO wheel. So there are 16 cells built into the 2X system and all 16 cells, <coughs> all 16 cells can be um, shown here. When the board is plugged in and 100% fully charged, a normal cell voltage should be right around um, 3.64 volts. Again, thanks to this gentleman off the 2X group. Okay, so just a couple things to be take note of. How about uh, charging? Do I have to buy a special charger? Do I use my stock one? How does that work? So you're gonna charge this board exactly like you would do it normally. So you're gonna continue to use the stock one wheel plus or V1 charger. Um, it takes about me about 55 minutes to an hour to go from 0% to 100% fully charged. So that's about, you know, two to three times longer than a stock plus, but you also have two to three uh, three more batteries that you have to charge. So that makes sense why it's going to take uh, a little bit. Another question I've been getting is how is uh, pushback affected on the, uh, on the one wheel, on the uh, 2X system? So uh, the normal pushback functions that you typically get on a stock plus. So, you know, pushback when you are pushing the board a little bit too far to the extreme, pushback for low battery, um, pushback for overcharge. Um, I think that's pretty much all the pushback. So all those functions still work with the 2X. The only difference is with the 2X installed, the intensity of that pushback is a little bit less. So for example, I noticed when I would run my stock plus and I would push it almost to the limit and trigger the pushback, the nose would kick, you know, uh, a little bit higher than it does currently with my uh, 2X installed. Now, it's not anything that's dangerous, so I don't want you to think that your um, uh, kickback or your pushback uh, doesn't kick in at all, but it just means that you have to pay a little bit more attention to it after you install the, uh, the 2X. Um, how about in terms of regenerative braking? Uh, so with the 2X, you still get that. Um, I haven't uh, been able to, you know, quantify, you know, if it charges any quicker or slower with the 2X installed versus, you know, going regenerative braking on the stock battery, but for sure it, it definitely does work. In fact, uh, one of my first rides this morning, I accidentally uh, charged my board uh, to full 100%, but my parents live on a hill. And, um, you know, I, I'm just visiting, so I'm not used to riding my board there. And so the very first thing that I could ride on was a downhill. And within, you know, like just a few feet, maybe 10 or 20 feet, I started getting kickback and a notification on my phone that I was overcharging. So that's proof that the pushback works and that uh, the regenerative braking also um, works too. Okay, uh, how about top speed? Am I gonna go any faster um, with the 2X installed? So I'm not an aggressive rider and uh, I, I usually do not push it anything higher than 19 miles per hour. So I can't really comment whether or not this is gonna make you faster, but according to the website and other users, it does not really affect top speed. Um, I will think though that maybe it allows you to reach the higher potential top speed of a one wheel plus. So let's say a basic one wheel plus could do theoretically 22 miles per hour. Um, by having the 2X, you reduce the nose diving tendency. And so because you're reducing that tendency, maybe that allows you to push the board a little bit harder than you normally would. So I don't think it directly affects and increases your top speed, but maybe it makes it more likely that you can safely, you know, get to that top speed. 
Okay, here's a, taking a quick break from my monotonous voice, uh, here's a quick video of me riding with a 2X installed. Okay, so as you can see there, um, you know, still able to turn, still able to maintain my balance and uh, the speed that I feel comfortable, comfortable with, um, you know, fairly easily. Going back to the uh, applications to check on your battery cells and your uh, voltage, uh, some people have also asked me where do I download the apps. So in terms of the uh, PO wheel, what you will do is you'll go to the uh, Google Play Store and just type in the name of the app and it should be there. It's for free, so that's that's really nice. And then in terms of the uh, second third party app, the OneWave, you're going to go to this website. So pause the video here to get that web address. Uh, once you are on that page, look for the most current uh, as of today. Um, which is December 24th, 2019. OneWave 2.1 is the most uh, current version. You're going to click down here on Assets, and then you're going to click on this first one for .apk. Go ahead and install it, and then just like I talked about earlier, you will turn on your board, turn on your Bluetooth, turn on one of those two apps, and then scan for your board. So that will uh, take care of how to uh, get to those two apps. Um, one final uh, topic uh, that I wanted to cover is people have you know sent me messages saying, hey, if you had to do it all over again and you wanted to extend the range of your Plus, would you still get the 2X or would you go for something else like the Ranger kit or the um, uh, Vamp kits that you can get from, I think it's Sony Wheels. So if it were up to me, I would do the 2X again. And, and for me, it just fits, you know, my type of riding style a little bit better. So um, I'm not the type of person that does a lot of stunts with my, uh, with my one wheel. So, you know, having a battery pack um, at the bottom is, you know, perfectly okay with me. Um, it gives me, you know, a good amount of range, you know, tripling my range, usually just shy of 15 miles per hour, which, you know, so far has been really nice. I can't really picture myself going any further than 15 miles. So, you know, that distance in and of itself is, is going to be okay. And then the price point. So, of course, it's not cheap. It's, you know, a little bit over $400. But considering the fact that with my entire build, I'm just at about... $1,250 to get about 15 miles uh, versus buying a full XR. I'm very happy uh, with the, you know, five or $600 that I'm saving having to get a, an XR. Um, there are other options out there that I've heard really good things about. So I'm not saying that Sony wheels or um, Landsurf's Ranger kit are bad. If anything, I, I've read nothing but positive reviews. And I think that those um, battery extender kits definitely have their place. They do very similar things to the 2X. So of course the range, um, they also up the torque a little bit because now you've got more batteries balancing the load. Um, and then, of course, preventing nose dives with those extra battery packs as well. So very, very similar. For me, though, uh, I think it would have probably been about a hundred or maybe two hundred dollars more expensive to get something comparable with, let's say, the Ranger kit. So let's put the mark at about four hundred fifty dollars for the two X to be delivered and ready to use. Right. So if I decided to go an ego route. Um, there are a few things that I would need to buy besides the batteries, but let's start with the battery first. So you might be able to find these cheaper, but you know, just going off of where I found them online, 
here would be like the Ego uh, 5 amp battery. Now I'm choosing the 5 amp as a comparison because it theoretically triples your range according to Landsurf and that puts me at about the same 15 mile range that I'm getting with my um, 2X right now. You can get a bigger battery like a 7.5 and do I think four times the range, but just for comparison's sake, we're gonna go with this uh, 5 amp. So we're already at 249 for the 5 amp battery you're gonna to need to buy the charger for it. I don't know if you can just go ahead and charge with your regular cable while the Ego is plugged into your board. So you may or may not need to buy this, but for convenience sake, I think it makes sense to have the rapid charger because it charges it a lot quicker. So let's just put that at 119 and then the battery was 250, so that's gonna be 350, about $370. Now to attach the Ego battery to your board, you're gonna need a um, fender. So a fender is gonna be, let's just say $80. So we are at 370 plus 80, so now we're gonna be at 450. And then you're gonna to need to buy the actual Ranger kit or the um, uh, harness kit from Sony Wheels, which could be, let's put it at a minimum of $100. So now you're looking at about uh, $550. So already there, I'm having to buy tons of accessories um, and I'm going about $100 over what I would spend with the 2X kit. So because of my riding style, I don't think it's worth for me to spend that $100. Now, if you are somebody that has um, lots of travels, like you fly on a plane and you wanna take your board with you, then I think the Ego battery setup with the Landsurf Ranger kit might be your best bet because the um, the 5 amp hour battery that you see here in front of you on this screen is uh, underneath the FAA and TSA 160 watt hour limit. So you will be perfectly legal to travel um, with this from a technical point. Some airlines don't really care, they just say no, but technically, legally, you are allowed to fly with one 5 amp hour kit. So if traveling is gonna be, you know, on a plane is gonna be important to you, then I would go with the, the Ego kit. Um, some people already have fenders. Maybe you've bought a used board or a bundle. So spending on a fender, that extra 80 or $100 doesn't really matter to you. So then it's really a toss up between like the 2X and, you know, using the other battery systems. Um, there is the uh, placement of the battery, which is another thing to take into consideration. So for example, let's go to, uh, most people know what these look like already, but just so that we're all on the same page, I'll type in here, uh, one wheel, Ego, and you can just see um, where the battery is gonna lie on top of the board. So something like that, right? Oh, perfect, this is right off of the Ranger Kits or Landsurf's website. So you can see that this looks like a five amp hour battery and a, they need to put it right there um, on top of the um, on top of the rails on the rear foot pad. Now there are people who ride perfectly with this; they don't have any cramp, you know, in their rear foot, and and that's great. Um, but you are adding a little bit extra weight to the top rather than the bottom of the rails, which. Some people have said it gives them a little bit more of a wobble while they're riding. Some people don't notice anything at all. So, you know, you'll just have to figure that out for yourself. But either way, it's going to be a different orientation for where you're going to mount that battery compared to the uh, compared to the 2X. So um, to sum up, uh, very happy with the 2X. Would definitely buy it again. I think it performs as advertised. Very impressed with the layout, the organization of the kit, and how well uh, Soren has delivered on um, his customer service. Um, so I would, I do not hesitate to uh, to recommend this to uh, to you guys. So that'll do it for today's video. Um, very lengthy, but you know, as you notice in all my videos, I like to be as thorough as possible. If there are any questions or uh, comments that you would like me to um, answer, please put them in the comment section down below. And as always, have fun, guys. Be safe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.